So we're joined today with uh, Maria Apazidi and Kriston Arsenis, both from the Mera 25 party in Greece. Uh, thank you both so much for uh, taking your time out of your very busy schedules to talk with us at uh, the Corner Spatey podcast. Um, what we kind of wanted to address were um, kind of going outwards, or kind of going inwards, outwards from the uh, uh, kind of pre-election uh, uh, situation in Greece, how Mera then ended up getting parliamentary seats, kind of the current situation with Greece, uh, and then, you know, different policy points that then makes Mera stand out from, um, you know, other parties in Greece, things like the Green New Deal, that then's also a European-wide project, um, and then also the launch of the Progressive International, if that sounds good for everyone. So... Um, yeah, so I guess just starting it off is that simply after the election of Syriza, um austerity packets and the Alchi referendum of 2015, the general perception of the situation in Greece and in most English and German media where um, our show is, uh, our, our show is in Berlin, um, kind of depicted the, the, the crisis uh, of, of Syriza and such not as, as a crisis of socialism and the failing of left government, particularly the failing of Tsipras. Um, however, we at the show kind of like feel a little bit differently about this, maybe because, you know, we're outside looking into Greece, but um, how Syriza also was seen as continuously caving into the wishes of the EU, the Troika, Germany, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, something that um, Giannis, your party, uh, uh, Giannis Varoufakis, the, the head of Meta 25, has talked about uh, on many occasions. Um, but all these considerations of kind of us outside looking in, what are the main issues that Greece uh, was facing before 2019? And how did this all kind of allow for um, this conservative uh, push to oust out um, the, the left-wing dominated government um, beforehand? I want to do Όπως είπατε ο ΣΥΡΙΖΑ υπέκυψε σε επιθυμίες της Τροϊκά. Αυτό είναι ένα θεμελιώδες γεγονός. I will make the following comment. As you already mentioned, ΣΥΡΙΖΑ capitulated to Τροϊκά's wishes. That's a fundamental event that allowed new democracy to outplace ΣΥΡΙΖΑ. When a political party like ΣΥΡΙΖΑ, that claims to be a left-wing party, and then becomes more conducive, even more than a right-wing party, and enforces a memorandum, something that even Mr. Schäuble admitted, then no one can really trust this government again. This, however, led to a crisis of socialism and was something from which only the systemic right benefited. We, Mera 25, were founded for that exact reason, so that we can overcome this crisis of socialism and so that words like the left, socialism, feminism, social liberalism regain their meaning. Unfortunately, after the OHI in 2015 and the 62%, as you may remember, OHI became a yes and lost its true meaning. For me and for all my comrades within Greece but also abroad, because, as you may know, we are part of a pan-European movement, DiEM25. A democratic way out could be achieved only through Europe, in my opinion. Why is that, and what do we aspire to achieve through that? Well, a pan-European, bottom-up collaboration, a transnational alliance from the working people, the people from the left, and from all those who truly believed in this OHI, so that they can envision a different Europe and a different Greece. The main issue, though, since the 2019 elections, or even earlier in 2015, or even back in 2010, when the first memorandum arrived, is that Greece is in debt, and that it's impossible for Greece to pay its dues. This is something that the systemic right and the supposed left don't seem to understand, and so then function as a political lever Merkel, Schäuble and overall the Brussels system. They have been renamed as an enhanced supervision, an euphemism for what we call enhanced interrogation, for torments towards us. For example, during this pandemic, the surplus expected from Greece renders the growth of this country and its economy impossible and reinforces economic recession. This is my comment in regards to your question and I have nothing else to add. Uh, I don't know if you want to add something, Kritona. Για βασανιστήρια που πολλές φορές δυστυχώς κάνουν εναντίον μας. Ζητάνε πράγματα όπως και τώρα στην πανδημία. Κάποια 
ας πούμε πλονάσματα, τα οποία δεν μπορούν να καθιστούν αδύνατη μια ανάπτυξη αυτής της χώρας και της οικονομίας. Ε, και καθιστούν μόνιμη την ύφεση, δυστυχώς. Εγώ, αυτό ήταν το σχόλιο μου πάνω σε αυτό. Ε, δεν έχω κάτι μέχρι στιγμής να προσθέσω. Αν θες, Κρήτο, να εσύ να πεις κάτι ακόμη. Ναι. Yeah, um, so, I will switch to, to English. The, okay. the main idea here was that Syriza uh, was elected with a very revolutionary program that I supported uh, a lot. And uh, it's, it was very clear from the very uh, beginning that it wasn't... It, Not, not all aspects of this program were essential to Syriza. Uh, but when we came to the point of, uh, uh, of the referendum and, and, and then the total as Syriza says, compromise uh, with uh, the European institutions, uh, then somehow Syriza seem to be proud to implement right-wing policies. Uh, to be more concrete, uh, oh, there were certain uh, pieces of, uh, of, of uh, public policies that were left out of the, of the agreements with the, in the, in the memorandum, the agreements with uh, the European institutions, including, poli- including the, uh, the uh, issues of police enforcement, And, uh, and many other issues. Even in that aspect, when, where Syriza uh, always fought against the, uh, the abuse of power and violence by the police, even there, which was not something that he had obligations towards the European institutions, even there he didn't do anything to change all the structures that allowed for this violent, system of violence and control in police against uh, demonstrators with very, very hard cases of, of violence, even, even people losing their, their hearing, their lives, and so on. So, Syriza accepted uh, a mainstream uh, uh, right-wing policy uh, as something that... Uh, that uh, He could go along to the end. And therefore, uh, Mericos Pede, the Greek DiEM25 party, came uh, with Yanis Varoufakis to, to, to say, no, you know, there is an alternative. Uh, we are all those people that voted against the agreement in the referendum. Uh, we believe that there is another path to take. And yes, there is still... Uh, people that want to defend public goods, people that want to defend uh, the, uh, the the public property, uh, the the rights of the of the work, of workers, uh, the the rights of the society to have development against unrealistic uh, and measures that have been implemented to us uh, with objectives that are beyond public interest. So with the election of Neo Demokratia in 2019, um, outside media was generally celebrating Greece coming back, in quotes, to their liberal senses. Um, while in early 2020, we see the rising tension kind of of this with Greece and Turkey, once again, uh, with conservative parties in both countries butting heads and the situation for refugees in Greece and Turkey worsening. Um, this is just one notable example of these changes in governance being seen outside of Greece. But what have been other notable changes um, either in domestic or EU policies or attitudes from the Mitsotakis government? Η Νέα Δημοκρατία και ο ΣΥΡΙΖΑ δεν έχουν κάποια ουσιαστική διαφορά, έχουν την ίδια μνημονιακή πολιτική. Δηλαδή δεν διαφέρουν στα σημαντικά, στα κοινωνικά και στα οικονομικά ζητήματα. New Democracy and ΣΥΡΙΖΑ don't differ from each other that much. They have the same memorandum policies. That means that they are not that different when it comes to the most important matters, so when it comes to the society and the economy. 
They both enforce the same policies, and they try to find some differences between them so that they can justify their existence. New democracy gathers around it an audience that turns the Greek people against the immigrants and the refugees, while it positions itself within two tendencies. We disagree with the idea that new democracy also represents a liberal tendency, which is sadly a fake one. What it represents in reality is a tendency that isn't just a right-wing one, but a far-right one. This phenomenon is also seen in other countries, not just in Greece. Kyriakos Mitsotakis is a political figure that is promoted abroad as a liberal, while in Greece he is caressing a far-right audience. In many cases, we see two different prime ministers. One that speaks to Europe and giving nice speeches on liberalism and on ecology, and another one that sharpens the far-right reflexes of the Greek people. The coexistence of those two tendencies means that new democracy on the one hand advocates for the economic aspects of liberalism, the so-called neoliberalism that leads to privatizations of everything, We are referring here to a case of extreme privatization, to be more precise. However, it overlooks something that is really important to the left, which is social liberalism. This government hasn't done anything progressive and hasn't promoted any rights related to ecology or minorities. It hasn't done anything essential. It reminds us of governments such as that of Orban in Hungary, The Greek government is targeting immigrants and refugees. Unfortunately, those groups suffer from a double instrumentalization. Erdogan, on the one side, is using them to solve his own issues in his country. And Mitsotakis is using them for the same reason too. In other words, the Mitsotakis government erases the European civilization. Regarding the immigration and refugee matters, it reminds us of Erdogan and Orban, as I mentioned before. It is a government that renders itself a police state, with a constant police presence in public spaces. It turns against university asylum. This government erases the European civilization values, pushing us back to the 50s. And on top of that, it nourishes the worst reflexes amongst the people by targeting minorities. I am not sure if it has been clear to the German media that the real populace in Greece is the Greek government itself. Mare 25's mission is to show to Greece what liberalism really is, which is social liberalism and not economic neoliberalism that leads to the destruction of the society. What we are attempting to achieve as Mera 25 is for the European model to break free as we believe in social liberalism and we want to have a society characterized by the harmonic coexistence of social minorities and the freedom of speech for everyone, which is a vital element of feminism and of social liberalism, a true European political model. Όλα τα στοιχεία του κοινωνικού φιλελευθερισμού που στοιχειοδοτούν ένα πραγματικό ευρωπαϊκό κοινωνικό και πολιτικό μοντέλο. So, I will agree with Maria. The, in, uh, as far as uh, the refugees are concerned, Syriza did not really do something. Its policy was not doing something. Its policy was that um, he will do a micromanagement of the issue. Uh, quite unsuccessfully, I can, if I can say, uh, living... Yeah, you feel, feel free to be, like, open. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no it's, <laughs> he did... Okay, Syriza uh, is responsible to a great extent to what's happening now in Moria. Uh, after five years, of four and more than four years of uh, Syriza governments, Uh, the, all the, the refugee camps are in a very, very, most of them, at least the, the ones in the islands, in a very bad uh, uh, situation. Of course, afterwards, the, the migration flows uh, were serious, seriously increased. Uh, but Syria did very, very little with refugees. It, its main policy was uh, wait until the issue is solved, uh, either... Uh, an end that would be an, an end in the war in Syria, 
or something, a, a decision at the EU level. Νέα Δημοκρατία came with a very aggressive policy on this, uh, where it said that uh, he, it, went to, it wanted to make a, a showcase of uh, uh, that, that refugees and immigrants are not uh, accepted anymore in Greece. Uh, so we now have uh, even more than before pushbacks and all these things that are uh, illegally, of course. And uh, it's uh, my problem is that uh, uh, Syriza does continue from where Nea Demokratia leaves things. The main idea of Syria is, is like the continuity of government right now. It's not to change. It's not to bring. A Syriza is not anymore um, an act uh, an actor of change. Uh, So, this is where uh, Merigo Spender comes in. Again, Merigo Spender comes in to uh, help uh, the... Sorry, family came in again. Uh, to, to help uh, the society have a, a moral stance on the issue of refugees. We, Merigo Spender says that there is no difference between refugees and uh, immigrants. No one leaves its country unless it, its life and uh, the, the life of the family is threatened, either for economic reasons or for violence. No one leaves the, the, its country if, if it's not his last and her last uh, choice. So, and then if we go to, uh, so we are we 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 are uh, for. Uh, accepting all refugees uh, uh, in, and we stand for uh, a European wide solution to the refugee issue uh, Nea Demokratia and Syriza uh, were the best players for Germany and other countries that do not want to actually have an equal distribution and a, a proportional distribution uh, amongst the European nations on the issue of refugee help. Uh, and Nea Demokratia plays this role very, very well. The role of the, of the guardian of the external frontiers so that uh, the problem doesn't reach Germany. We are not... Uh, we are, Mary Gospede will never, will never play that role. Uh, so, whereas... In environment, again, we have Syriza uh, not changing any of the destructive environmental laws, even those that he fought against before being elected. He, Syriza was elected to a great extent because of the environmental and civil movements that uh, had uh, uh, that believed that if Syriza got elected, their objectives will be met. And uh, all that they were fighting for uh, will be achieved. Since they got elected and continued the, the policy of the previous governments, thus uh, leading to uh, a dismantling of the environmental and social movements, uh, because uh, there was no political party to hope uh, that it will bring change. They would, they would be fighting on their own, with no one to support them at the, po at the, at the political level. Again, here, Mera Gospet, the, the DM25, comes to change this. So, again, movements, and social movements and environmental movements do have a voice in the parliament, once more. And, of course, Turkey, uh, sorry, <laughs> Nea Demokratia, uh, comes into... <laughs> <laughs> Nea Demokratia uh, goes many steps, uh, many steps ahead into the dismantling of the environmental legislation. And this is very essential to, for people to know. Because of what Syriza did and didn't do in the labor policies, in the environmental policies, let's say it differently, Syriza did what Nea Demokratia would have done previously. 
now, Nea Demokratia says, if Syriza did this, then we can go even further. And the way they, uh, they bulldoze the environmental legislation, the labor legislation, is sometimes harder than the, than the memorandum, the pneumonia, uh, the agreements with the, uh, all the policies that were, in play, were enforced and they were pushed by the European countries to Greece. Uh, countries that were socialist, communist, whatever they were, but would accept and sign these policies to be enforced in Greece. So, um, it is, it is quite, um, uh, quite uh, uh, shocking to the people the, le- the level of uh, deregulation uh, that is being uh, uh, pushed through the parliament with this government. But I'm afraid that Syriza, if he ever has the opportunity, will, t- will continue from where the democracy has left it. And I'm not afraid, uh, uh, how can I say, just to uh, antagonize Syriza. Uh, I was in Syriza before. Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't have a, a personal issue uh, with Syriza. I'm afraid that this is the reality, and that's why in Merit 25 we try to to build this alternative for people because they're getting hopeless. And uh, regarding Turkey, it is very important to say that um, uh, the main uh, instrument, because it is true that the European countries are not uh, uh, at all supportive to Greece towards uh, the an aggressive, a very aggressive neighbor that nobody would like to have uh, as is Turkey. Uh, but uh, because it is more important uh, as, a, as a commercial partner to Germany than it is uh, as a member state of the, of, of, uh, uh, the common project with the European Union, uh, Greece is. Uh, and this stands for many other countries of the European Union. Uh, it is uh, European and the EU is always willing to, for, to forgive uh, the, the, the violations of the, of, the, of the international law and uh, the disrespect for member states that, agree, that Turkey uh, represents uh, daily. But uh, the policy of, of uh, Syriza and uh, Democratia on this is, is common, and it is linked to the oil explorations, and it is linked to the, the common front uh, with uh, the U.S., uh, Israel, Egypt, Cyprus, and, and Greece for the oil exploration, uh, which is a very, um, if I can say, uh, opportunistic common front, because, uh, again, uh, most of these countries are driven by interest, and this changed a lot. And, uh, but it is the main rhetoric, from, both from Syriza government and from the uh, from Nea Demokratia, that we need to go forth for this uh, precedent for Greece oil drilling and gas drilling uh, for, for to have our geopolitical security flow towards Turkey, which is, of course, uh, not true, and uh, it's very convenient for, for big powers. Um, so, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Nea uh, Demokratia um, also uh, kind of used uh, Syriza as an antagonist that also really worked well as a, for the outside image of Nea Demokratia um, Demokratia um, in the EU, because as previously mentioned, the response to Nea Demokratia's victory was met with international praise and still very little criticism outside of Greece in international media. Um, maybe you could share your thoughts on the external coverage of Greece uh, since the 2019 election. And we have also noticed that reports from Moria have completely dropped out of media. Is that the same situation in Greece? Whatever may have happened till 2019, from the moment that new democracy took over, the international media cannot overlook really obvious and evident facts. 
The new democracy has been an authoritarian and populist power in Greece. It is the same power that also reinforces oppression and turns against immigrants, refugees, the European civilization, that exploits the resources of the country, that uses nationalist rhetoric, and all those constitute a truth that cannot be overlooked. I really hope that the international media will acknowledge that the true liberalism in Greece is supported only by the true left, which, after the capitulation of Syriza, is represented only by Mera 25. Mera, uh, yes, what I would like to add is that uh, it's, it's, of course, given that uh, the new liberal prefer Uh, a new liberal party to implement new liberal policies than the left party to implement new liberal policies, even if the left parties can do it even more successfully. Uh, okay. So, um, yes, of course, it's, uh, they had their own and uh, their own people in government, whereas Syriza were these uh, leftist people that, okay, they, they did their job well, but uh, as far as new liberal policies were concerned, but Uh, it's, it wasn't of their kind. Uh, but one thing that has to be very clear is that uh, Mitsotakis and it's his government, they're really, uh, in a way, submissive to the, uh, to the big powers. So they, they play the role of the, of the good boy. They believe that if they accept all the... Uh, if, if, they are, if they can be of service to the big powers, there will be a benefit maybe for Greece, for themselves, or so on. At the same time, of course, uh, this doesn't work in, work in international politics, but this is the, 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 this is, this is the story and the way they, uh, they think, actually. And at the same time, they're very oppressive to the weak. Uh, so, at the same time that there will be... Um, They want to accommodate any demand for, from Germany, for, from the US, from so on. Uh, they would be very, very strongly uh, enforcing uh, police uh, violence. Uh, like they would crush uh, demonstrations. They would uh, arrest people with, uh, with no reason. Uh, they would be, they would attack youngsters, uh, they, they would, and of course they will uh, attack all the, the labor rights and uh, deregulate uh, legislation. Uh, this is their, this is their uh, ideology. Their ideology is that the right is the, uh, the, the legitimate rightful people are the strong ones. If the com big companies do well, if we accommodate all the demands, the economy will grow. And this in a country like Greece, where 95% of the public in, uh, revenues come from the small and medium enterprises, and the self-employed, where 90% and more percent of the, of the employment comes from the self-employed, small and uh, micro, and medium enterprises. So we have a government that believes that uh, uh, the, the two or three big foreign and national uh, uh, entrepreneur families uh, will be the ones that make the difference. And of course, whenever the private has something to them, it's always with loans from the Greek banks, which are in a state of collapse, and with guarantees from the Greek states. A classical case is the Fraport uh, privatization of the takeover from Fraport of the main airports of Greece, again with a loan with the, from the Greek banks. And now they want to privatize the water, and in the preparation of the uh, contest, international contest for the privatization, they already write that the, 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 the uh, buy of the water the one that's going to, to buy the, the, the very, not the infrastructure, the water that goes to Athens. All the sources, the dams and the rivers. And it's going to be done with uh, 
publicly, Greek publicly, guaranteed loans to the company that's going to buy the, the, the Greek water. It's, it's, things are unprecedented. But again, Syriza will, will continue from where Nelgatia leaves it. And thus, uh, that's why Merico Spender is on the streets with the people fighting for these privatizations that are against public interest, even against the debtors' interests. Uh, just like a quick note about that, I thought it was really funny when um, uh, uh, a few months back, um, Mitsotakis and uh, Athonis Yogaris visited Germany, and there was this bizarre interview with um, Yogaris on like BBC where he's like, Merkel was always a friend of Germany, and I just could not take that serious. A friend of Greece. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You said Germany. Merkel, yeah. Merkel, Merkel was always a friend of Greece. And it was like exactly to the point about how like, um, yeah, like uh, ND will will like bow down to kind of the bigger powers is very, very, very apparent in this situation, I think. And that that interview was like amazing to me <laughs> because mm. I couldn't take it seriously. Um, but just like uh, also the, the, the second part of like that question was also too with the, the sense of then the coverage of um, the, uh, the, the, the the refugee situation uh, Moria, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of Moria and, and Lesbos and stuff like that, because in Germany we stopped hearing about it. Um, and I'm curious, uh, we're, we're, we're curious in the sense of how has that been? Um, oh, it's a media coverage yeah, yeah, media of that coverage, in Greece. Kind of how, yeah. what, like, what's the current state of that then uh, in Greece right now? Um, let's begin, so Κοιτάξτε, το πιο βασικό είναι το τελευταίο κομμάτι που είπατε, που είναι για τη Μόρια και ότι πλέον δεν καλύπτονται πλέον ούτε από τα μέσα ρούτσε της Ελλάδας, αλλά γενικότερα ούτε από τα διεθνή μέσα. Συγχρόνως οι συνθήκες είναι πραγματικά τραγικές για αυτού του ανθρώπου. The most important thing is what you mentioned towards the end regarding Μόρια. The fact that there are no reports from Moria, neither from media in Greece, nor from abroad. Meanwhile, the living conditions there are truly miserable for the people. The government hasn't achieved to render the conditions there more humane, and the only thing that this government succeeds in doing is to extend and augment the human pain. You have for sure seen that they suddenly become aware when a child gets hit by a car, or overall when something bad happens. So we hope that the general awareness will be raised. Not by the systemic media, as those openly support new democracy, but by the international media, as it's their duty to provide reports about such topics that have to do with people that sacrificed so much in order to be here now, that are left with fewer children of theirs, or women, who have been through terrible things that will be torturing them throughout their whole lives. Those matters are so terrible that wars cannot do justice, but they need to be dealt with, in my opinion. It's beyond imagination how, in 2020, we live in a country where all those things happen to women and children, and there is no awareness whatsoever raised around those events. And you just sit and observe whether you are the Mitsotakis government or if you are international media or Greek media, we need to raise awareness around those issues. And not just when something terrible happens. No, yes. Um, okay. First of all, the the refugee and, uh, issue is again for America and the DM25. There is no difference between refugees and immigrants because nobody leaves his home if his life and the life of the family is not threatened. Um, so um, it is a first of all, it's a European issue. Uh, what we see in Greece 
is the outcome of a lack of European policy. Uh, so, uh, and then you see how people deal with it in Greece. But to be honest, the same is in, in the hands of each European citizen. And when I'm talking about the same, I'm talking about the fact that uh, we have no organized way for these people to apply for uh, to be refugees in a normal way. Uh, they have to cross, to try to cross illegally the sea mainly. Uh, whoever reaches Greece uh, will most probably have lost a child, a partner, a mother, a grandfather, a father on the way coming here. And, uh, and this is, of course, uh, unbelievable. It's the collapse of the European civilization, in essence. Um, we cannot be called civilized when we have these things happening in our frontiers, no matter if we push these frontiers to an, another member state. It's our frontiers. Because it's, it's the frontiers from people not reaching us. And even if the pain doesn't reach our, our streets and our cafes and our TVs, it, it, the pain is there. So, uh, what happened to Greece, in Greece with the, the and, and European, in the EU, with the coverage of this issue is simple. Like, uh, Greece and the EU want desperately to forget this issue, to make like it doesn't exist. For Greece, it's more tough because uh, there are people crossing the frontiers uh, very often. Uh, for other countries in the European Union, it's more easy to play like nothing happens. Um, this is what happened also with um, the incredible events in uh, in Evros, uh, with uh, the massive. Uh, currents of immigrants trying to come to go, go through Greece, into Greece. We have the, the head of the European Commission and the commissioners coming to Greece and congratulating Greece for not letting anyone in. Uh, Greece plays the role of the, of the, of the guard in the European castle. This is the essence. In a way, Turkey plays it also, but when Turkey wants, doesn't want to play it and people come to Greece, Greece plays the role. And if it weren't Greece, it would be another country. But it is the European country, because these people don't want to come to Greece. They don't, nobody wants to go to a country to start a, for a better future, to a country that has economic problems. They don't want to go to other European countries, of course. So, Greece plays that role, and again, as we say, they play the role of the good boy. Uh, Mr. Mitsotakis plays the role of the guardian, of the good boy, of the, of the, of the police, of the European frontiers. Um, so, and of course, this issue gets out of the media, because it's very convenient to go out of the media. Uh, because this way we can forget about it. But it's there, it's still there. Since the, the war in Syria doesn't finish, and uh, the problems throughout the world and the climate refugees don't stop leaving the houses because of the climate change that we developed nations have uh, induced to this world, and then uh, refugees will continue to try to come to Europe in any ways. I don't know if this answers the question. It, it, we don't hear much because it's convenient yeah. for us not to hear, not to think, and not to take the right decisions. Just to give you a, a measure, um, there are, of course, hundreds of thousands of uh, immigrants and refugees in Greece. Uh, and I remember this, there was this proposal by uh, Luxembourg to, to accept 10 uh, children with no families, uh, unescorted children, refugees from Greece as part, as, of, as, their, part of proportional 
proportional uh, set of responsibilities. And of course, this is a joke. I, I know friends that uh, uh, that administer uh, NGO buildings hosting 15 <laughs> refugees. Uh, and of course, there are thousands and thousands of people. I don't know how many thousands of people are now in Moria anymore. Uh, yes, should, there should be... Yeah. Sorry, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. I thought you were, yeah. yeah. In Austria also, in other countries also, it was like, even even Germany uh, offered to accept like 2,000 uh, well, people, I think. It's really, uh, it's really ridiculous. It's really a joke. If people, uh, it's, and again, this is in practice the end of our civilization, because we cannot be called civilized when we leave people losing one after the other the family members in order to manage to come to Europe and stay then locked for the rest of their lives in a refugee camp. Yeah, yeah, that's actually interesting because before Germany accepted more um, refugees from from Moria, um, they started with accepting like 50 children only, so Germany definitely has more capacities and that only because of public pressure you know, so Germany also while Luxembourg accepts 10 Germany, a big ass country with a lot of uh, capacity, accepts 50 children, so yeah uh, So tying also then with, with uh, you know back to, to you know refugees and whatnot. At, at the beginning of the year, we saw um, the current government bring forth uh, some questionable new proposals of building new refugee camps um, and attitudes, obviously, as we talked about towards Turkey uh, previously. However, um, 2020 has been anything but ordinary with the outbreak of COVID-19. And um, has the government been using the virus as an excuse to justify their reactionary proposals either against refugees, uh, current relations uh, with other European or, or Turkish uh, you know, relations, or um, any other domestic matters? Because um, the, uh, um, this isn't on the script, but uh, the one that then I remember reading was that uh, uh, at the very beginning of COVID-19, they tried to blame refugees for it in camps, which was, like, just not true. <laughs> it was just, just uh, and that was media that then we got out of here. I don't know what then the case was of, of, of it in Greece. And very well did it, in my opinion. Because only as a gel you could have να, να το χαρακτηρίσει κάτι τέτοιο. Ε, γενικότερα, εντάξει, ο κορονοϊός έχει πλήξει παγκόσμια ε, την οικονομία, έχει πλήξει παγκόσμια και υγειονομικούς, είδαμε τι έγινε στην Ιταλία, στην Αμερική, αλλά έχει κατεξοχήν ε, ως ε, δικαιολογία. And you did very well. Because I can only use the word ridiculous to better describe this. In general, COVID-19 has caused an economic decline on a worldwide level. It has harmed not only the economies but also the health systems everywhere. We saw what happened in the US or in Italy. However, in Greece it has been used as an excuse. Overall, with the collapse of the Greek economy, we had a strong decline at the end of 2019, beginning of 2020. The government states, however, that it was then when the growth was about to begin. Why I am saying this, as you asked me about this in specific, that the virus was used by the government to their advantage and will be used in the future as an alibi. Also, in relation to the immigrants and the refugees, it is used as a pretext, as an excuse. What's at stake here is a far-right political language that considers both the virus and the refugees as two infection threats that threaten our country. They constantly draw lines between the refugees and the virus, and then the government presents itself as the primary agent that will defend our country, Greece, from all kinds of infections the virus one, the refugee one, etc. This is the narrative used by the right, as there is no right that can really give reasonable arguments. 
nowhere in the world really. We have already seen how the governments of Orban and Erdogan are acting. My point is that there have always been problems with the Greek-Turkish relations, and this is unrelated to the current situation with COVID-19. We need to think further about this, so that we can approach this topic in the right way. Lately, those relations have been brought up again in regards to how each government is handling immigrants and refugees. While Erdogan is using them as a tool for his own political plans and aspirations, we also have the issue of a general expansionary imperialist policy from the side of Turkey, something that has always been there and exceeds the temporary circumstances of the current pandemic. In other words, it has been a tactic that has been employed overall throughout all those years, something that became even more present since Erdogan came to power, which was the beginning of a fascist era, era to tell the truth. That's what I think overall. The European Union needs to understand that the infection is not brought up by the refugees, but by the way in which you are handling them. It is clear that no human being deserves to live under those terrible conditions in Moria. And of course, the chances are higher that there will be a faster spreading of the virus there. But this is not the refugees' fault. It is the government who is to blame. We see two different elements there. If they can acknowledge that, they will be able to also resolve the problem. What they do is present us only with the problem, without the solution. Because they claim it's a problem of Turkey, it's a problem of those who come here and they don't have the right to asylum because of the Dublin II treaty and because it doesn't allow us to do so, etc., etc. Which is something that new democracy has accepted overall. It is a treaty that has chosen to treat refugees this way. And now a new democracy wants to pretend that it has a more humane logic, but that it also needs to be the strict gatekeeper. With such contradictions, the solution to the problem is rendered impossible. In our opinion, as Mera 25, we think that there needs to be institutional change, such as in the case of the Dublin Treaty, but also beyond that, we focus on the human factor as a vital element to take into account throughout the process of solving the issue. <laughs> Εμείς ως ΜΕΡΑ25 έχουμε τονίσει ότι θα πρέπει γενικότερα να υπάρξουν και θεσμικές παρεμβάσεις ενώντας να υπάρχει μια αναθεώρηση της συνθήκης πάνω στο Δουλήν αλλά πέρα από αυτό η, η ανθρώπινη πλευρά των πραγμάτων θα βοηθήσει γενικότερα από τον κόσμο ε, και αντίστοιχα και τους πρόσφυγες. Αυτά ως Yes, and on my side, uh, first I I can I don't have a lot of time, so I will I can uh, say uh, to the podcast until for another 15 minutes, but then I have to run to another meeting, another That's Zoom perfectly meeting. Perfectly fine. Um, I can we can we can um, like wrap up the last three questions then as one, if that's okay. Okay, it's just a short answer to, to, the, to the previous one. Uh, the biggest shock for this government was not the issue of refugees, that was sometimes to the press, but the main shock was that this government was in the verge of privatizing the public health system. And this, uh, the COVID-19 crisis didn't allow her to do that. And the most shocking thing is that after the COVID-19 experience, they still try to do that. They still try to privatize whole buildings of, of, of public hospitals. And uh, they still don't hire people in the public system. They still don't equip the hospitals properly. And uh, it's like in the new liberal way of thinking, nothing has changed from COVID-19. Uh, so I guess like the, the, the main reason that we brought um, both of you on from Mera 25 is because you are a new left-wing party in Greece and uh, like 
in my opinion, where the French have more cheeses than there are days of the year, Greece is a country where there are probably more left-wing parties and movements <laughs> than there are in days of the year. Um, kind of in this ecosystem of just a lot of leftist movements, a lot of leftist parties that have like kind of come in and out and whatnot, what makes Mera 25 stand out? And um, with then the current nine parliamentary members, um, what is Mera's plan? Like, what is what does the future look like uh, for for this party? Like, Καταρχάς χαίρομαι πάρα πολύ που πάμε σε κάτι ευχάριστο ύστερα από τα πιο δύσκολα έτσι, θέματα που είχαμε με τον κορονοϊό και την προσφυγική κρίση. Δεν είναι ότι... First of all, Γιατί... I'm very glad that we are moving towards something more pleasant. After all those topics that we discussed so far about the coronavirus and the refugee crisis. The response to why Mera 25 stands out is quite simple. It is a political innovation, not just in Greece, but also worldwide, that Mera 25 is part of a wider pan-European movement, which is called DiEM25, and is part of the Progressive International. 25 is a challenge for us, so that Europe becomes more democratic and transparent till then. What's also unique about Mera 25 is that it operates on a local level, in close collaboration with various communities and groups in Greece, and on a global level through continuous discussions, dialogues, deliberations with comrades from other European countries, and Germany, of course. We believe in a bottom-up change, as I also mentioned previously, where the people can shape and experience the vision of European civilization, which is based on freedom, solidarity, democracy. Not in the way that the European Union has been operating in the last few years, by employing the economic values of neoliberalism. As Mer 25, our vision has four main elements. The left, liberalism, feminism and ecology. We are the only political party that combines the ideas of the left with social liberalism as we resist the technocratic dominance in Europe and aim towards an alternative democratic future, not just for Greece, but also for Europe. Those things have also been mentioned by political parties belonging to the right. There are also some ideologies in political parties that, although they consider themselves that belong to the left, they see themselves detached from Europe. We, on the other hand, are skeptical towards the EU leanings of the last few years, and we have an issue with how the EU is behaving overall. However, we are fighting together with many comrades from Greece and abroad, so that the true European values are employed. One example is feminism. Let's finally act on our feminist ideas. Let us be this political party, not just in Greece, but also in Europe, that has more female members of parliament than men. Right now we are nine in total, but the women are more than men. That's also what we mentioned in our mission statement. A 50-50 percentage of women and men. We use the same philosophy in our hiring process. I have to acknowledge that the people also rewarded us with their votes, voting for w more women than men. Lastly, we are the political party that has been fighting in the parliament for the natural environment, and we say no to extractions from the Greek seas. These are quite important issues that occupy the majority of young people. <laughs> Όχι ότι μόνο αγγλικό όχημα συγκεκριμένα στις, ε, στις, στις γυναίκες. Ε, και δεν ξέρω αν γίνεται να σου πω την αλήθεια και σε, στην Ευρώπη. Δεν το, έχω, δεν, δεν το γνωρίζω. Αλλά αυτό γιατί γίνεται. Γιατί εμείς το καταστατικό μας το έχουμε παντού, ας πούμε, 50-50. Ε, και μεταξύ ανδρών και γυναικών. Ακόμα φανταστείτε και η φιλοσοφία μας στην ε, πρόσληψη του προσωπικού είναι η ίδια. Ε, ο λαός όμως, εγώ αυτό που είδα από μας ε, είναι ότι μας επιβράβευσε για αυτή μας την επιλογή ψηφίζοντας περισσότερες γυναίκες όπως σας είπα παρά ε, Και τέλος θεωρώ ότι είμαστε το κόμμα το οποίο είχε αναλάβει στο παρόν ελληνικό κοινοβούλιο 
ε, τον αγώνα στο φυσικό περιβάλλον, ε, γενναίες προτάσεις που έχουμε κάνει ενάντια σε περιραίουσα ατμόσφαιρα, όπως και το να πούμε το πιο βασικό, όχι σε εξορίξεις, από τις ελληνικές θάλασσες. Είναι αυτά, ας πούμε, τα πιο έτσι βασικά φλέγοντα ζητήματα που θεωρώ ότι απασχολούν ειδικά τους νέους ανθρώπους. Um, just also quickly too, because I know that um, this is like you have to leave soon, um, Kristen. Um, but uh, also like to tie in that is also maybe just talk briefly about like the Green New Deal as well, because I know that that's your 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 specialty, of course. Okay. Yes. Um, the Green New Deal it's a, it's a DM25 program uh, project, so it's not uh, something that we work a lot in, in Greece, but it's, it's the basis of how things can be implemented in also the Greek uh, Meta 25 agenda. Now, I will start with that. The main idea with the Green New Deal uh, with, of DiEM is that you have the, uh, the European Central Bank and the European Bank of uh, uh, Investment uh, that they can borrow from the market uh, on behalf of all the European citizens in a way to have a euro bond, uh, especially directed and direct these funds for, to all the, proportionally to all the, the, the European countries uh, for uh, green projects, projects that will allow us to uh, move out of uh, uh, the black economy into the green economy. And uh, the difference with, uh, between this project uh, that talks about 500 uh, billion euros annually uh, being invested in such uh, development projects uh, and the European Commission's Green, uh, Green New Deal is that uh, our proposal uh, has money. Uh, the European uh, Commission's proposal is, uh, uh, is vaid both in, in as far as uh, the me, how uh, the, the necessary funds will be allocated, but also on uh, how this, uh, these funds will be effectively uh, directed towards the, tra the transition to a green economy. Uh, going to the DIN to the MEL25 and what makes it different in the European, in the, in the Greek uh, uh, Parliament, First of all, and, and between the, in the Greek uh, left world, uh, we don't, we're not a, an opposition, we're not a, a, a let's say, a, a party against, uh, that just there is no to anything on the table. We, are, we, we always come with our own proposals in each and every a uh, piece of law that the, this government brings to the parliament. Uh, we come with, uh, we are with a proposal with, uh, with alternatives uh, that are realistic. So part of our name, it's, uh, it's exa again, again, exactly, uh, realistic, realism. So it is, uh, uh, the front, uh, of, uh, of realistic, uh, and uh, um, un unobedient uh, policy uh, politics, uh, unobedient to the to the strong and doesn't go against the public interest. So um, we are the only Green Party left in uh, in Greece. We are the only party uh, against uh, extractions. Uh, oil and extractions and gas extractions. Uh, to give you uh, an example, even the Communist Party uh, in Greece, which is against the extractions per se, it's against the, the extractions because they are run by uh, multinationals. Uh, it says that it should be a public uh, operation. <laughs> We are against oil and gas extractions, period. And we, because it doesn't make sense in this moment of, uh, with the big challenge of, uh, of addressing climate uh, change and the climate crisis, 
to, to have a, a new country coming into the extraction game. It's really out of logic and it does make sense. And um, so uh, I believe that this is uh, the fact that we, we have realistic alternatives. We have a very concrete economical base and uh, uh, we are not just a, a party that says no, we have our own economic problem which is realistic. It's a, you will see also we, we, we are coming out now with a, a new uh, law proposal for the economy which is based on the European uh, legislation. Uh, it doesn't, it, it accepts all the acquis and comes forth based on the acquis, based on the best practices in Europe with concrete proposals on how to go out of this crisis. And uh, uh, to give you an example, turning all the privatization funds uh, into a development bank that will use all the, 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 the state property as a collateral for, uh, for, for, for in order to be able to go forth and give loans to businesses uh, to, for the necessary liquidity that uh, is missing from the, from the Greek economy right now. Uh, and to, to put an end to the, to the Iraqis, this red, this red loans, uh, incredible, uh, program that has been, uh, legislated by this government, which copies the, the Italian one that says what? That the funds will, will take on the, all the, the red loans, and not only red, not only, uh, loans for background, uh, households and companies, but also uh, those that are not totally red, and uh, they will. And if they don't manage to sell these houses in the middle of COVID-19, in the middle of we stay home, people will be stay will be staying without a home, will be left without a home. And if we don't, uh, if they don't manage to sell it into uh, one third of the of, of the of the nominal price. The state will give them then to these funds 12 billion euros. Greece will be indebted with 10, 12 billion more uh, of euros. Uh, will be increased. Will, the debt will increase to this extent. It's far more than uh, what the state is giving right now to the economy in order to uh, reduce the impact of COVID-19. So, um, this is what MERA 25 is. Uh, realistic, green, economically based, and of course, 100% uh, pro-European. And uh, this is uh, the problem for uh, NERA Democratia right now, because uh, as the, the hardening of the, of the impact of COVID-19 to economy will, will lead to a new memorandum and a new law and a new uh, Packet of very uh, of uh, uh, very strong uh, cuts in wages and, and uh, in pensions. Um, the only opposition will be coming and will come from of, of May 25, and this is why a lot of focus is also it's also uh, very you know, that it keeps us out of TV. Uh, I can tell you that when we were elected, I would be in uh, in most national uh, media televisions uh, in once per week, and I can tell you that uh, since uh, COVID-19, I've been only to one uh, media. There's a, a whole campaign of keeping uh, Mera 25 out of publicity, and uh, but of course. Uh, we don't, we're not waiting for the TV to, uh, to, to show our, our work and ideas. We are there on the streets with people and this will, this is what will make the difference in the end. Um, so, uh, Kriton, you said you had to go or, um, okay. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, if it's okay with Maria, we had, we had just a, a, another question that actually ties in perfectly with, um, how Creton's answer just ended, if that's okay with her. Uh, staying with the topic of COVID-19.
2015. Uh, most, if not all, European economies are expected to dip into a recession as a result of the virus. Greece, as a country that has not been free of economic recessions <coughs> or depression for the entire decade, uh, is obviously expected to be hit hard. Yet, once again, with a very little discussion towards it, because the number of deaths in Greece so far have not been compar to, uh, comparable to Italy or the UK. Nonetheless, the virus's destruction is not over and what is to be expected in the coming months in Greece? Εμείς ως Μέρα 25 είμαστε κριτικοί στην στρατηγική γενικά κυβέρνηση. We, as Μέρα 25, are critical towards the strategies employed in the occasion of the pandemic. And I will mention here a few problematic points. It is clear that the strategy of facing the pandemic has two phases the lockdown phase and the transitional phase, what we are going through right now. The problem is that the government measures once we return to the new normality is something that the government is praising themselves for, but they are not necessarily the right ones, the essential ones. Already since the beginning of May, we, Mera 25, have been arguing that the transition to the second phase comes together with only one single element, massive tests and tracing of the cases. We shouldn't be left in the dark as we are right now. The ones carrying the virus should be under medical surveillance and in quarantine. A state that functions by having a specific program should have already proceeded with massive tests so that we know if we are positive or negative and based on that, to act accordingly. That will, of course, mean that there is a general plan of where those tests will take place, how will the citizens will get tested, which will be the use of which technological resources. For example, through mobile apps, people could get a temporary passport as long as they are tested negative. We could have followed the example of some countries that dealt with the virus in a successful way, such as Germany or some countries in Asia. Germany, for example, ordered the tests from early on and created a network of scientific institutions that will be the ones responsible for executing the tests. This hasn't been done here. Luckily, we came out of the lockdown phase successfully with a low number of cases, but that was the case in other Balkan countries, like Bulgaria. The question remains, why are we not taking massive tests right now? Does the government think that it's too late? We think that there is still time, because we need to be thinking already about autumn, so September and October, so that we don't need to go through another lockdown phase. This is something that Mr. Varoufakis and us have mentioned multiple times in the Parliament. We need to follow the example of doing massive tests. Only in this way we will be properly prepared. We won't need to go through a second lockdown and we won't cause even bigger economic decline. Um, yeah, thank you, Maria, uh, so much for coming on. And Kriton, obviously, uh, thank you uh, from a distance because you had to leave early. Um, uh, I uh, uh, and the rest of, of the members of Corner Spatey, thank you guys a thousand times over for taking time out of your very busy schedules uh, for coming on the show and talking about um, you know issues obviously in Greece that are being overlooked um, by at least media that then that, that that we kind of perceive and giving um, yeah insight into that and also kind of showing um, you know our listeners you know kind of the alternatives that exist. Um, Uh, in Parliament in, in Greece, which is something I think a lot of people overlook because mm -hmm. they assume that leftist movements in Greece are always on the streets mm -hmm. and that there is, um, like, parliamentary movements are quite important to the progression of, you know, counteracting the reactionary wave of politics that we're currently seeing throughout Europe. Thank you so much for arranging this. It was a pleasure talking to you.